or get crazy with the old guy. The whole world is crazy, man. Man, women today, women today are crazy, man. Where wife? Y'all don't know my wife. Because my wife is crazy, man. You ever eat cheese doodles? Cheese doodles are crazy. Yo, what's up, YouTube? This is Talking Crazy 88 back again with another episode for you. Uh, wanted to do a video today regarding a video I saw on World Star Nigger Network. Now, this was a family of coons and savages who. Um, Had a young boy, probably a friend of the family, uh, stole $2, a $2 headphone from a dollar store. And then put the, do, put the headphones in this woman's purse to hide it from whatever he was hiding it from. Um, now, this video starts off with this woman, with this beast, this wildebeest. Of a woman. Yeah, I said it, wildebeest. Because if you take a look at the video that's going to be placed in the description box, um, you would think I, I, my description of this woman is not without merit. Now, she goes on and starts yelling at this boy and starts smacking him in the face. Then she tells him to go outside, get out of the house. But not before these two prison niggers, who apparently is their son, this uh, this wildebeest uh, um, 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 children, son, sons of a single. See, this is what I'm talking about, people. Sons of a single mother, and apparently he knows so much about the penal system. He talks about you're going to do 15 years for a two dollar headphone. Fuck you in California where there's a, a three strike felony. Well, three strikes and you're you're in, you you're in prison for life. Three felonies and you're in you're in prison for life. Is that where is is that where we come up? Apparently, this boy was about in his a teenage boy, probably around 15, 16 years old. And I don't even understand how he ended up. Become becoming friends with a family full of savages, because that's what these motherfuckers are, or low income savages. Because look at what they did. They they beat this boy down, verbally abusing him. Um, and as I was reading the comments, uh, you got this prison nigger who then slaps him right in the face ten times. And then smack, choke, and then and grabbing him in the chokehold, cussing him out before throwing this boy out in the street, out of the house. Now, my commentary on this is that this is not indicative of low-income savages who feel the need to go ahead and embarrass children, whether they're their own or, then, or someone else's child. Now, apparently, this boy had some issues. He had to be, he had to have some issues by hanging out with these low income, low function, unintelligent savages who, who, whose only tool of teaching method is to, one, humiliate, humiliate this boy by verbally abusing him. And then assault, physically assaulting him. I saw about 10 felonies on this video. False imprisonment. Assault. Battery. Terroristic, th terroristic threats. Child abuse. Well, maybe not 10, but maybe 5 felonies. There could be more, but hey. I'm not in law enforcement. So, that's up to the authorities. And I encourage everybody to go ahead and send this video to the local law, law, law enforcement 
to the authorities to have these to have this family investigated. I don't know where these, these punk ass niggas are from. These low functioning, unintelligent niggas, but they all belong in prison. Every last one of them, even the ones that's filming this whole incident. Somebody that's stupid enough to film this whole incident. So the so the whole world from could see how much of a savage how how much of a savage you are. Yeah, you're proving them wrong that you're not that you're civilized, that you're a good family, that you're a good Christian family. Y'all act like fucking savages. And I'm glad that there's gonna be more people there should be more people doing commentary condemning this act of violence. But see this is not uncommon in the black community. Especially in the low income section of the black community. Where violence is very prevalent. You know, you go up to Chicago, go up to Detroit. There's nothing but violence up there. Black folks killing each other. Black folks humiliating each other. That's why black women and black men are at each other's throats. We're doing videos condemning each other. We're doing videos trying to humiliate each other. You got, you got niggers that's online, niggers that are online trying to shut each other down because we have an opposing point of view. There's a brother, there's a brother that has his own radio show who has problems with black, black, black American women and simp ass niggas who's trying to give it some nasty leftover pussy. Low hanging fruit. You know how I know? Because I was a former simp. And I went through rehab. And I'm a and the difference is I'm cured of my symptom. Simp my simpish behavior. I don't need to go after low hanging fruit. Especially on especially online. But back to these savages, these niggers right here. These savage niggers. A savage niggers full of fam, a family full of savage niggers. See, if I found out that that was my boy on there, they better be glad that I don't have children. Because if that was my boy on there, hanging out with savages, rest assured I would kill each and every last one of those motherfuckers. Because people like that need to be eradicated from the place, the face of the earth, or at least eradicated from society. Because I don't believe in integrating the bad apples with the good. Now this boy was wrong for stealing out of a two, uh, out of a dollar store, and apparently this boy has some issues. Probably has some issues of becoming a man of what, or trying to figure out what what. It, what is what is it like to be a man or growing into manhood see apparently the, this boy was hanging out with these prison niggers and they got a warped sense of what being a man is all about you know trying to impress them trying to you know be a g be a man be you know this is this is probably their idea of what what you know trying to impress them and it backfired um, we got to have, and this, is go, this goes to the, to the brothers out there, not the niggers, the brothers out there. We got to be better role models to the, our children. You know, we, we got to be visible. And I don't mean like better, no, I'll take that back. We have to be visible to these children out here who, who are looking, who are seeking male, a male figure in their life. I know I'm guilty of it, but I, I have to start somewhere, but I'm going to start with my own family members who may need a male figure in their life, who need somebody to talk to, who needs to have an example of what being a man is all about. This right here, this video right here, it just proves my point of what I've been talking about in all my videos. Where the savage behavior of niggers is seem to be prevalent. It seems to be put out there and more visible. 
because of World Star Nigger Network. I don't know if they put this video up on there or World Star Nigger Network just found the video and just posted it for them. But rest assured, your coming your comeuppance will 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 arrive. And all you motherfuckers out there who think it's cute just posting videos like this up oh, was well, rest assured. The authorities will be lo are also looking at these videos. You might want to think about that next time you want to put up a video assaulting someone else, abusing someone else, uh, another human being, with no regard for their safety or their lives or without impunity. Because I, I rest assured if it was me, every last one of y'all motherfuckers would be dead. Well, listen, I got to run. This is Talking Crazy 88, and I am out of here, people. Call the authority. If you know anybody that's in this video, call the authorities. Don't, there's no sense of protecting these raggedy-ass and savages, savage niggers. I'm out of here. Oh, yeah, before I go, you know why I'm taking this video to heart? Because this boy... He reminds me of what I did. I was not I was a little bit younger than him. But I'll tell you this story. Back around 1985, I was 11 years old. And my parents, well my mother and my brother and my sister, um my mother took my brother and my sister and myself over to my grand to visit my grandmother out in Jamaica, Queens. Now, the car broke down, and we had to pull off uh, out in Whitestone, Queens, where there, was, um, where there was a path mark and a garage. It was kind of like a strip mall where they had a path mark right next to the garage and everything else. And... Um, we stayed inside the path marked away from my, uh, my family members to come by and pick us up. So I was just roaming around the store pretending like I was shopping. And, and, I, and I was a bit of an avid collector of Archie comic books. Now, yes, I know I'm a lame, so fuck it. I collected comic books. Fuck it. That's what I did when I was young. Anyway, um, I saw this one edition that I didn't have. And I wanted it. But I didn't have any money on me. Well, I didn't have any money at all. So I asked my mother, can, I ha can, I can you purchase this book for me? This comic book for me? She said no. So... She didn't have the money right now, or she didn't have time for it, because her concent uh, probably her concentration was on trying to get us the fuck out of there with the car, and trying to figure out how to pay for the repairs on the car. So instead of just respecting what my mother, what my mother, my mother's decision, I went ahead and took the comic book right in the back. Hit it, put it in my pocket, and walked out the store. Now, now, since it was time for us to go, we got into the car. The car was repaired. We got in the car and went out to the South Jamaica, Queens, to drop my sister off for the week. So... Like a fool, I was reading the comic book while I was upstairs, and I was like a fool. I brought it right downstairs to have something to read while I'm eating dinner. And I was stupid enough to sit next to my mama with that same comic book in hand right under the table, and she saw it, and she questioned me and said, "Is that the same book I told you not to, that I didn't want, that I told you to put back put down?" 
I lied, but she saw it through my lie and said, yes, it is. And we'll talk. I'm going to have a talk with you as soon as we get home. So as soon as I got home, she sat me down in my room, had a long talk with me. And it was like the worst discussion in my life because she didn't actually humiliate me by cussing me out, putting her hands on me, threatening me. She talked to me like I was a low life, like I was a thief, which I was, by saying that gave me all the scenarios that could have happened. I could have got caught. And we all could have been arrested because I was, she was responsible for me over a comic book that's worth almost a dollar and 25 cents at that time. A buck 25. And then she told, went on and told me that if it wasn't late at night, we would drive back to that path mark. And I would have you give the comic book back, put it back. Well, actually, we would have confronted the manager, and I would have had you give back the comic book and let the manager decide whether or not he wanted to press charges on me. And from that day on, I gave the book to her, and she told me, give me the book, because I'm going to get rid I'm going to throw it away. Because I don't want the police to come up in here and find the evidence. Now, I was 11 years old at the time. I didn't know whether or not the police were going to come after me for a, a comic book that's worth a dollar and 25 cents. But from that point on, after I got that humiliating conversation and the days afterwards, when she took us shopping with her, she had to watch me like a hawk. Every time I picked something up, she would just have that look on her face and that sound and that voice that asked, Is Danny, do you want that book? If you do, I'll get it for you. But it was kind of like a, a, you know, something that I've never heard before in my life, which. And it was kind of like she was saddened. She was sad, mixed with worry, mixed with fear. And that was the most humiliating thing. That was the most, and I'd never felt so lousy in my life. And from that point on, I never stole another, th I've never stole anything out of a store or stole from anybody. Because I know what it's like to feel like a thief. I know what it's like not to be trusted. But what this, what this, sat, what this, what this family full of low functioning niggers did to that boy was create another criminal. I wouldn't be surprised if he re he's going to replay this incident in his head for the rest of his life. He's going to grow up angry and vengeful, vengeful, evil because of some group of low functioning niggers. And I understand what my relative was saying that people are created to become evil. But, I, but at the same time I have no sympathy because you brought these people in, you brought these children into the world under dire circumstances because you didn't have the tools to teach these children anything, to give, to give these children any type of sound wisdom so they can go ahead and become productive members of society. These are people who create criminals. Cre criminals are created, people. And this family full of prison niggers and savages, well, we just might have created another one. Well, listen, I got to run. I got to run again for real. This is Talking Crazy 88, and I am out of here, people.